hoop stay, and the lab. Another day in the lab. Who's gonna be hot? Who's gonna whine about not getting calls? Who's gonna leave early? Only the Lord knows. Another day at the lab. How many, how many have now? One? Eight. Eight? You go four and four. Yeah. Who's missing? We're missing um, Kendall. Where's Dino? Where's Dino, Rodney? I'm taking double off the list. He said he was coming. He didn't show up. No, I got game of three. Yeah, no, I got to be ready today. Dude, big playoff game for him. Four years ago, I was um, diagnosed with um, cancer. They had to remove my parotid gland. And I remember um, after the surgery, I think a day or two after the surgery, the guys were still, I still made arrangements for the guys to play. And part of my rehab was to just to come and sit down and just watch the guys because the banter, the shit talking was, was what I needed. I remember my wife and I went to see the um, psychologist after the surgery and she said, well, do you think you need therapy? I said, no, I have my own therapy. There are 20 guys on the south side that, you know, are gonna get me back. That's the actor. Okay, okay, Gerard, good move, good move. Where to go, Denzel? Where to go, Denzel? <laughs> Born in Kingston, Jamaica. We moved to New York when I was about nine years old and um, they are fell in love with basketball. Coming to New York from Jamaica, my brother and I had, had um, heavy Jamaican accents, and we moved into a mixed neighborhood in, in downtown Manhattan called Stuyvesant Town. So we were probably one of the first black families in that area. But we assimilated quite quickly because, of our, because we learned how to play basketball. volunteered at lab school for 12 years and my son played too. Only, the only thing I get paid is with the keys. I have keys to the gym. Once I had the, the, the keys, uh, we, so we started up playing half court. Arnie Duncan, who's the secretary of education now, is from, went to lab. He's a high parker. So Arnie Duncan, James Fleming, who was in the other gym playing, and a couple other guys, we started up playing half court. Two and two, three and three, then the game grew to five and five. So for the last, I want to say seven, eight years, we've, had, we've had, added this full court run twice, three times a week, sometimes four times a week. Once I started opening up this gym on a regular basis, this is where they gravitate, this is where they're all gravitated to. Okay, because it was eight, okay. Yeah, I know, it was eight. That's why I was saying what was going to be too heavy. Yeah, I know, I know. Yes, sir, yes, sir. You know, you got to support cash. The regular guys, um, Malik Murray, I mentioned to you, played at DePaul University. He's now a financial guy. Um, Jeff Sanders, I think he works with the youth right now, Trouble Youth. Played, the, played in the NBA for 10 years and then, and then several years over in Europe. Played the Bulls, the Atlanta Hawks, I think a year or two at the Knicks in Charlotte. Rodney Hull played at Kansas University and also at Chicago State. He's now um, a high school, he's a middle school principal. And Kendall Gill, 13-year um, NBA vet, U of I, Charlotte, the Bulls, um, Seattle. Rob Feaster, who I think teaches school. He played at Holy Cross University, led the nation in scoring. Charles Oakley has played here. Um, Sam Mack played with the Houston Rockets. He's, he's played here. I couldn't get back this time. I thought you saw him, though. Ah! Good shot. 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 Good shot.
That ball come right back to Jeff. Hey, hey. Dropper. Yeah. Shot, shot. There you go. The age, well, the age group spans from 23 to 57. But don't let the age fool you, because, you know, you know, guys in shape. These aren't your typical weekend warriors. These are guys that play two or three times a week, four times a week sometimes. You know, your typical uh, weekend warrior plays, you know, Saturday and Sunday, maybe once a month, twice a month. And most of these guys are playing the 40 and over league, which starts in early June. So the last two or three months have been coming up here regularly trying to get in shape, you know, game shape. But most of us, the, the, the regular guys, play here all year round. It's called love of the game, baby. There are other games in the city with probably quicker and younger guys, but in terms of the skill set and knowledge of the game, from what I've been told, the guys, guys elsewhere, they don't play like we play here. Because, you know, we move the ball. We don't hold it. It's not, a, it's not a one. We're playing the game the right way. Put it that way. The game is being played the right way. Some of the biggest names that, that have played in this court, I'm going to start with the biggest name, President Barack Obama. He's played there several times, you know, and have his security guys in each corner and outside, and the snipers on the roof, and the dogs will come in. And again, because I'm the gatekeeper, I get the call, I clear, get clearance with the AD. They'll come in early, they'll clean the entire sweep, entire area. The dogs will come in, they'll sniff every single door and cranny, every corner. Then you'll have his security guys, and we'll come in and we'll play for two hours. So, He's been the biggest name. The second biggest name is Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan came to play about four Christmases ago. And actually that day, Oakley was here also too. And Michael lost and he hates to lose. Michael just absolutely hates to lose. But Michael, you know, the, you know, the, 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 um, the intensity you could tell was really turned up a notch. Guys heard that he was here playing and guys were trying to get him. We had to lock the door. The reason why he plays with us is because he knows we know how to play. You know, we just didn't get paid to play, you know, like he did. But, I mean, he knows if he comes in here, he's got to guard his man. If not, he's going to get scored on. You know, he knows guys are going to, he's going to get the guy's best game. They're going to play him really physical. He's going to talk shit. They're going to talk shit back to him. <laughs> and he loves that. Most of the guys that are pros, um, they want to go play where they can have just a good game. You know, not you, certain, certain uh, players you play against, when you've been in a the pro, they feel like they got something to prove and they're trying to, you know, they're trying to win against whoever, you know, whatever pro is in the gym. A lot of the guys have played pro, a lot of the guys have played overseas, minor leagues, and then you get some of us pros that play. So, I mean, I just think it's a good group of basketball. It's, it's invitation only. And we're known to have the best so-called game run in the city of Chicago. And I've had to throw guys out. I've had to put a list with a security guard because guys heard about it. And guys, because they knew me, just automatically thought they could play. Uh-uh-uh. It's invitation only. We don't want any riffraffs. I mean, you know, we never, we, we may argue amongst ourselves on the court, but once we get off the court, it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's the best. Come here, go. Check, go with it. Look up. Look up. Look up. I go. Yep. Stay here. We're gonna we lose the ball too, and I, I just gave y'all the ball on the travel. I just gave y'all the ball on the travel. It's time. It's time. Did you see it? I'm gonna give y'all the ball and the fucking turn. It's your ball. Right. It's, it's your ball. ball. It's their ball. No, it's not. We just gave them one on travel. That's what you travel with. We want stopping the ball.
you was talking about. Oh, boy. No, you can't talk about this shit, man. Yeah, we call it all the way back here. That kid died. They did They did that. They did that. That's We're going to take a fucking fast break and then give them the ball. Fast break. The ball came to the three-point line. I took off with it. No chance. Give me the ball. 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 He's a guy that, um, you know, his famous saying, because he's, he's strong, he's not that big, he's about six feet tall, but he's strong, works out, lives in the weights. But his famous line is, um, if he gets a rebound and put a put back, oh, you're not eating right, you know? <laughs> um, uh, Jeff Sanders, he, he quietly speaks under his breath, you know, you know, guys are guarding and trying to play him real physical. He said, come on, fellas, come on. You know, you can't stop me, you know, I've been doing this for years. I got paid to do this. Um, my favorite line, if a guy closes out on me really hard, I'll tell him he's too late, you know. <laughs> uh, Michael Jordan's favorite line was, haven't you seen me on ESPN? <laughs> Another one of the famous, famous Michael Jordan lines was, if you, if you reach, I teach. Um, Tony McCoy talks a lot of trash, and Tony, whenever he wants the ball, please, please, let me have it, let me kill him, let me kill him. But you know, it's 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 fun because you know it keeps us motivated, and um, you know it's just it's part of basketball. You know, it keeps us young. I feel like Muhammad Ali. I'm pretty. I'm a bad man. I shook up the world. I'm pretty. I'm a bad man. Huh? And I'm pretty. I'm pretty than everybody in here. Look at me. Get a close up, baby. Huh? That's what it is. This is pretty. That's ugly. That's ugly. Hey, come here, Joe Frazier. We're just having fun, talking trash, and, you know, competing. That's what it's about, just for bragging rights. I'm just in the present when I play, yeah, uh, because uh, I really don't even think about the stuff we used to do until, until we're done playing. Then we'll talk about, oh, man, I used to do this and used to, you know. Now it's just, you know, you're in the moment of what's going on around you because you understand your limitations and you understand what you can and cannot do. Uh, usually when guys start doing more than what they normally do, it, at this age, it shows, you know. So now I just stay in the moment, <laughs> I do what I can do, and that's it. <laughs> I ain't trying to do no more than that. <laughs> no more than that. Every day I start doing things that I, I don't normally do, I wind up messing up. I'm working too hard. I run out of gas. So it's like, man, I got to catch my breath. Man, y'all go ahead down the court. And I'll stay. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it ain't, it ain't, I don't have to do all that. I keep the game as simple as I can get it. <laughs> as simple as I can keep it. That's it. I used to be able to dunk the basketball. I can't dunk the basketball. Um, I don't go to the basket. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but why? I mean, you know, because you take a chance when you go to the basket. The 56 Ian Mahoney versus the, what, the 30-year-old Ian Mahoney? 30-year-old is going to win. <laughs> because, I mean, better shape, younger, faster, probably, you know, a lot more quicker. Um, but the 56-year-old is smarter, I think. He's a lot smarter. You know, no, no, you know just, use, just playing the game the right way. Probably is prepared better now because I know I've got to be in better shape. At 30, you're still young. You think, you know, this is it. You know, you know, I'd have to work as hard. So, yeah. You really don't develop until you retire, <laughs> because you you get to that point now. Well, all that athletic stuff that I used to do, I can't do that now. So, I'm gonna pay attention to what's the easiest way to score. So that's the difference I think today, at, at my age now and what I used to do. Because before, all I was trying to do was get. To, to the lane. If I could get to the lane, I was dunking the ball. In fact, I know the last time I put my head above the rim, I was 33. 
and I haven't <clears throat> come close. <laughs> I haven't come close to the net <laughs> since then. <laughs> so, but that's the last time I worried about really, you know, dunking the ball. If I dunk the ball now, it's an accident. <laughs> it's an accident. My eye, that wasn't my intent, man. I didn't realize how high I got up. <laughs> you know, so that's the difference. Yeah. Like, Anya, who's Paul's wife, called me the other day and said that um, he doesn't like he doesn't like birthday birthday parties. So she thought it would be best if you know we just uh, we just had a regular session with all of our guys, and that she would invite some other guys who don't who don't really play in our group to surprise Paul for his birthday. That's your grandson. This your grandson? Yeah. Thank you all. <laughs> Donnell made a comment this morning that um, he's going to continue playing this game until they throw dirt on him. So I'm, I'm going to take Donnell's phrase. I'm going to continue playing this game until they throw dirt on me. at the crack of dawn, my usual time. You know, wide awake, no alarm clock, routine. Up, um, get my stuff together. And some mornings, my back, you know, you know, old age, I guess, gets a little stiff, so I have to jump, just take a quick hot shower just to loosen up, rub some flux all, and I'm ready to go. I go listen to me. Little M&M. Uh, 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 uh. I'm still competing, it forces me to get into the gym and work out and stay in shape. I remember this, one of the coaches made a comment a couple of years ago. He said, Ian, you're like a pro. You got an M you got a pro schedule. <laughs> I'm a um, middle-aged pro. <laughs> I mean, I think about just being the best I can be right now, you know, because I know that, you know, I know for a fact that most of the guys aren't getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and getting those shots like I am. I know that. It's only, I know that. Other guys are still in bed. I know it for a fact. Not too many guys are doing what we're doing. Routine, baby. Routine. Routine, there you go.
Routine, routine. Money. So a tender row now, right? See? Once I got focused. Routine, baby. Bam. Money. Money. Perfect, huh? <laughs> ah! Oh. And I wonder why I make shots, Vincent. You know why I make shots? Because I put the time in. My thing is, if you're going to play competitively, you got to work. Everything you do, you got to work. Can't take it for granted. Can't take this game for granted. You can't disrespect the game.